Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from, from Outer, Outer Space. Space. I hope you enjoy. A Human Kindness, written by Teller of Tall Tales. Mine lay in the forest path, leg ensnared in a metal trap. It had been days since the rusty metal jaws had closed around my leg. I was weak from hunger and thirst, ready to die, as I watched the carrion birds in the sky circle overhead. Then something crashed through the brush, and I lifted my head, at least hoping to see the being that would claim my life. In the moments before they appear, I reflected on this life, hatching alone in a cold crater, bending off the big grey four-legged beasts that nipped at my undeveloped hide, fighting to survive in the foreign forests. Yet alas, a mighty beast like myself, laid low by toothed iron hidden beneath the leaves. The being burst from a bush, a small pack adorning its back, strange clothing of a blue material covering its pale hide. The human boy froze upon seeing me. After all, I was much larger than it, the size of what humans call a Kodak grizzly. But the boy didn't shy away. Instead, it approached curiously, softly cooing, snapping mad at it as it got closer, bearing sharp teeth designed to tear flesh and chew bone. The human fell back in surprise, staring at me with wide eyes. Then, Instead of running away, the boy stood back up and took their back off, rummaging through it until it pulled something out, a small metal box emblazoned with bright colors. It opened this box and pulled out a flat, white, and square object. With an elegant toss, the object landed in front of me, the tantalizing scent of meat coming from it. Without taking my eyes off the human, I nudged the white square off the top of the object, grabbing the thinly sliced meat with my teeth and snapping it up. My thirst reared its ugly head as I swallowed. As if knowing my struggle, the human boy emptied a metal box of small packages, grabbing a clear bottle and pouring the contents into the container. Setting the box on the ground, the human slid it over at the ground with a long stick until it rested by the white squares. I could smell it, mortar, pure and clean, in only the way that I could dream of. Thus clouding my judgment, I sank my snout into the container and began to drink the sweet, cold water offered to me. As I was lapping the last drops of moisture from the metal, bending it in the process, I felt the pressure and gain on my leg lessen, making me snap my head up to lock. The human had their back turned, feet placed firmly on either side of the trap, as they pried the jaws of it open with their slim fingers until I could pull my leg free. When I did so, the human let go of the trap's jaws and fell back, scurrying towards their pack. Fear watered its eyes as I stood over it. Slowly, I lowered my horned head, placing it against the boyish chest, able to feel the terror and dread as if they were my own. I had not a clue why this young human had chosen to free me, knowing that I could kill it as easy as breathing, but I felt no urge to harm the speak as I pushed my own thoughts of gratitude into his own as I thought I was speaking. My teeth, my wings, my blood, my flesh, and my hide are indebted to you, small child. Fear no harm that may come your way. The child's heartbeat relaxed, and a soft palm was placed between my horns. The human spoke, giving me a name, a beautifully human concept for something outside of their own species. I'll call you Snappy. We'll be the best of friends forever. I felt the joy radiating off the human as it collected its things and walked off me tailing at their heels. The human showed me its dwelling, a small wooden building with a gravel road leading up to it. The boy gave me a meat called bologna from a circular package before showing me a medium-sized empty metal shack in the tree line, saying, You can stay here. Mum would be bad if she found out about you. I did not ponder the statement as I found the shack dark and its entrance well obscured. It was comfortable and much preferable to the dank caves I'd lived in until then. Years passed. The boy grew into an exceptional young man, whose mother, still unknowing of my presence, grew weaker and weaker with each passing year. I watched as the boy who I'd seen grow cried into my flanks, wrapped in my wings as humans in white garb removed the woman from the cottage on a wheeled stretcher, my own heart aching with the power of the human sorrow as they cried out. 
I wish I could help her. She's fought so hard, but it's only gotten worse. It just keeps getting worse. She's going to die, Snappy. I can't stop it. I let the human cry themselves to sleep against my hide, letting them drift away as I lifted myself to my claws. Standing above the human, I bent my neck down and nipped at my ankle, drawing fresh golden blood from the wound. Gently smearing my glistening blood against the boy's lips, I said in my mind what I wished he could hear. My blood to heal and rejuvenate as you slaked my thirst that fateful day. As the glister faded from the human's lips, I rested. Over the next week, the boy's emotions told all, even without his words. They said, he just went away, like a miracle. The tests keep reporting the cancer is dying impossibly fast. She should be able to come home within a month. I felt joy of my own as the human matured and aged with his mother, often enjoying a meal on the back patio. As he grew into a man, our bond strengthened such that we could share thoughts and emotion across great distances. I grew into my wings, able to fly and perch in the sturdier trees as my form became more lithe and long. A night came, when up the gravel road a vehicle with no headlights approached my human sweaty. Big men, smelling of alcohol and bad intentions, quickly exited the sleek vehicle. They didn't suspect or notice me watching from the tree line as they grabbed the human weapons and approached the door. They didn't make it halfway before I lifted it off the ground with a roar to alarm and wake my human as I landed between the house and the men, making the four of them scramble back on four, my talons digging into the men's shoulders as I heard the door unlock and swing opened. I turned and gazed at my human and their mother. A horrified expression on the woman's face as my human ran out saying, Who the feck are these guys? Why are they here? Stress bleeding from the words. I conveyed my thoughts to him. They approached, weapons drawn, reeking of malicious intent. My claws are at your command. My human looked at the terrified men, a uniquely human sentiment clawing its way to the surface. Mercy. Let them go. He stated clearly to me, before addressing the other four humans. I know not why you decided to come here, whether it was to rub us or kill us. But take this as a turning point. Become better men. Don't waste your one shot. I let go of the man, claws retracting from the warm flesh as I sat back on my haunches by my human. My considerable bulk between his mother and the men as they picked up their injured compatriot and loaded him into the vehicle, driving quietly away. I heard my human's mother speak in a shaky, terrified voice. T Tim, um, what the hell is that thing? We looked over in perfect unison. I felt a strange emotion from my human. Tim, as I knew him, his name, he felt saddened. He hadn't told his mother. Softly he said, Mom, this is Snappy. You know that night way back in grade school when I came home all muddy and my lunchbox was broken? Well, I only told you half the story. I did get pushed into the ditch by some older boys. But the reason my lunchbox was broken and I was missing all of my food was because I gave it to Snappy here, freeing him from the old bear trap. He's been living in Dad's old shed since. The woman's emotions changed from fright and concern to matronly anger. And you never told me. Timothy Derek Kremster, if you weren't an adult already, I would tear your hide for not telling me that you had literally befriended a fucking dragon. Even I shrunk back a little at the small woman's anchor, but she took a deep breath and calmed herself, saying, You've got a heart of gold, Tim. It just scares me sometimes how you use it. The next dozen years passed in a blur. Tim's mother aged, and at the ripe age of a hundred, passed peacefully in her sleep, leaving the house and property to a sixty-year-old Tim, who had his own family now. His little girl loved sitting on my back and riding me like her favorite movies when she was but Tim's age when he saved me. I found myself sleeping in a hand-built shed with proper bedding and heat during the winter months. Tim, his wife, and adult daughter would share the Christmas with me, giving me gifts of fresh venison and shiny trinkets that now adorn those plain shelves in my new home. Never did they ask for anything in return except my company. Then, the day came that the sun was blotted out by a massive ship, entry pods burning into the lower atmosphere. Somehow, 
I knew it was my own kind returning for this world's judgment. They landed in every major city, huge areas devoted to troops and gear for conquest. I felt my time beginning to draw near as a massive Elden Dracon landed in the yard where I knew I would be. I felt Tim's confusion as he hobbled from the house on his cane, awestruck by the Elder's size and bright coloring. But the Elder's attention ever strayed from me. In my skull, he asked, Graxel, tell me, do you believe this planet worthy of a place at the high table? Shamefully, I considered that the humans weren't ready. Their war, violence, and disregard for each other seemed unworthy then. Like a ray of light in the darkness, I could only see the good Tim had done. His mercy, his selflessness, his ability to turn the other cheek, but most importantly, his kindness. This human had never done anything to hurt anyone, even against those that may have wished him harm. Bowing deeply in respect, I answered, On my blood, on my flesh, on my hide, my soul, I say to you, humanity deserves a seat at the high table, far more than we do, ancient one. The elder considered my words carefully, speaking only when he deigned to. Would you give your life to seal this promise, young Dracon? I felt a part of me revolt at the words, my limbs wobbling beneath me. I heard Tim's cane fall to the ground with a clatter, and suddenly the old man was shaking between me and the elder. The elder's head reared back, ready to strike, but Tim's words stopped those deadly teeth in their tracks. If you're going to make him kill himself so that we can live, go fuck yourself. If you're going to make anyone die for this, make it me. Seal it with my blood. The raw emotion in Tim's voice shook me to my core. He was sobbing, but not from sadness, from anger. The elder gazed at Tim with ancient eyes. No words or emotions in that scaled face. Until to my surprise, the elder bowed to Tim, speaking in a tone like falling boulders. Human, you have earned my respect. Your selflessness cools the fire in this ancient heart. Rejoice, for no blood shall be shed on your kind's behalf. Tim fell to his knees. He couldn't stand for very long without his cane, and I could only imagine how hard the stress of the situation made it. The elder lifted a leg, biting a wound in its own scarred flesh, to draw a golden drop of blood that he pressed against Tim's lips. Drink and be restored permanently to your youth, human. You have shown the best of your species this day. But Tim did not drink of the elder's sacred blood, instead stating, I wish to die in my bed alongside my wife. I couldn't bear to see her and all that I love fade away, so I remain the snake. Snappy will take my place. He'll know what to do. The elder lowered his leg, and the wound closing almost instantly. Very well, human. May your soul rest peacefully amongst the stars when you pass. Holding my head high, unable to force away the deep sorrow of knowing my greatest friend would pass on before I would see him again. But as we said our last goodbyes, he whispered in my ear. My blood, my flesh. My hands and my hide are all yours, as yours were mine. May we meet again beyond the death's veil, good friend. End of story. I would quickly like to thank the Tier 5 members, Marky, Cam Maxwell, Casper Arnolds, Oakfield, Lord Azrakul, and it's difficult to pronounce. Thank you very much.